This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. We are talking with criminal defense attorney Lara Uretzian. And we're you know, kind of in this week after the Daybell case, kind of getting our self back together, getting all of our thoughts back onto what's going to happen moving forward because this story is far from over. Uh, and uh, getting our eyes on some of the other cases that are uh, developing. But as we kind of decompress from the uh, the Vallo Daybell case, uh, Laura, I want to get your perspective here at the very end of this, because uh, I'm sure you have a good one being an expert criminal defense attorney. Uh, were you surprised uh, what happened there at the very end that there was no defense uh, or the defense rested, if you will, uh, when it was their turn to present a case for Lori? Well, it tells you that there was some kind of a problem, uh, whether it be uh, with the client as far as far as communications or relationship with the client. Maybe it was a difficult client who wasn't cooperating with her lawyers Mm -hmm. uh, or just didn't want them to put on a defense. Uh, Or maybe she it's it's a mental breakdown of some sort. Maybe she was incompetent. Um, bottom line is usually, usually, even if you're not, um, going to take the stand, not every single defendant takes the stand, sure. right. To testify yeah. in most cases, they don't. So that would have never surprised me. Right. Mm-hmm. I expect that that's standard. And the ones that are not the standard are the ones who really, or the, the, the ones who are not the typical ones are the ones who actually take the stand, right? Yeah. Um, so that I I didn't expect her to necessarily take the stand, but again, she she's had some mental health issues, so you know the question was still there. But nobody knew for sure, but not having any defense at all is not something I expected. Now they don't legally they don't have to put on any witnesses. They don't have to put on any evidence. They don't have to do anything. I mean, the defense can literally sit there, cross their arms, right? And mm-hmm. say, you know what? The burden is on the prosecution. Yep. They need to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that she's guilty of all of these charges. And hence, we don't really need to do anything mm-hmm. other than just point at issues and problems and how they didn't meet their burden, right? Yep. But then generally, despite that, despite the law, despite all of this, the defense usually puts on some witnesses... <laughs> Sometimes they're impeachment witnesses yeah, uh, or some kind of evidence that would go to support an argument that they're making in their closing. But in this case, you don't have any of it. So it's a bit baffling. And and honestly, it's probably an indicative of a very difficult client. And that's what I'm hearing from sources on the ground in Boise was that uh, she was very difficult to work with for her attorneys and that from the get go, she did not want to throw uh, Al- throw throw uh, Chad under the bus or Alex under the bus. Obviously, there was some amount of that that went on in the trial. Uh, but and also what I'm hearing from a lot of people who were in the courtroom is her demeanor whenever they were talking about Chad or Alex in a negative light and pointing that maybe they did this, but she didn't. She was very tense. She did not like hearing that sort of uh, argument being made on her behalf. So I would have to wonder if when it finally came time for her to present her side of things, there was no options unless you went down one of those roads. Yeah. I mean, if she basically she had uh, the the lawyer's hands were tied. Yeah. Uh, If she's not cooperating, I mean, Alex is not even alive. He's, Mm -hmm. He's deceased. So Imagine if she's got strong feelings about someone's reputation at this point Mm -hmm. uh, after they've parted from this world. That's. I don't I don't even know how to react to that. And clearly she cares uh, enough about Chad and Chad is uh, alive and he's going to go through the same process, obviously a trial. Mm -hmm. So she's being protective of both of them. Uh, yeah. at, at, at her own cost very much you know, so she's, she's she's basically basically saying i don't want you to do anything i don't want you to point the finger at them 
Uh, and and when you say that, what are your lawyers going to do? There's really not much left for them to do. And I'm sure this issue is going to be brought up on appeal. Uh, and, and, appeal that. and that's the and, question that I that I have for you about that, because, I mean, I believe that their defense were was really trying to do whatever they could based on the shit show they were given. Uh, but at the same point that they didn't put anything up. If she, I mean, she would have had to have made that choice. She would have had to have consulted with them, correct, and said, uh, you know, I, I don't want you, I need you to rest. I don't want you to argue this. I don't want you to argue that. That wouldn't have been a choice that the attorneys made on their own free will, correct? Right, of course, of yeah. course. They had to talk to her. They had to understand what she wants and mm -hmm. what she doesn't want. Um, and, uh, but the problem is this, and and again, we're not in a position to be able to, determine it mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting to know what truly happened and how much of that she explained to her attorneys mm -hmm. now her position may have been listen i was involved this is it and i i don't want you to put up things that i think are lies mm -hmm. that's one possibility right yeah the other possibility is she's just quiet she's not talking to her own attorneys about what happened yeah, she's she's just keeping it to herself, close to her heart, and just not sharing any of that information. And that's a non co that's a, that's a client who's not cooperating. Mm -hmm. And if she's not cooperating, I mean, and especially if it has anything to do with her comp competency yeah. level or incompetency to stand trial, it should have been something that the lawyers should have brought up, even mid trial. Yeah. And, and but had, I don't think that happened. And we had uh, talked about that at the beginning. We were saying, you know, I asked you, everybody, I said, do you think she's going to make it through this trial? She clearly did. But should she have made it through this trial, I guess, is the question. Yeah. And I think maybe there's a problem here because it's almost suicidal. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. From, in the legal sense. Yeah. What she did is suicidal. And people would do that for Dory, two reasons. Um, they just care too much. Uh, about someone that they're protecting, mm -hmm. right? That they don't want to hurt someone else, in this case, Chad, and well, Alex was not even around anymore. And, or, or they've got, <laughs> there's some mental health issue. Mm -hmm. She's not say, thinking straight. She's not thinking straight. Or she doesn't care anymore about her own life. Well, and with I her, support. how, I mean, we clearly know she's not thinking straight and she hasn't thought straight. But I mean, with all of this uh, on top of everything else, we, we we see the way she thinks. We see the things that she's been involved in. Uh, I, I guess at what point do we reach that bar and say, "Yeah, she's not right," <laughs> because no, I mean, yeah, and she's not competent maybe yeah. this next trial. Uh, but again, I'm sure there's psychologists who have been interviewing her because competence is not necessarily that part. Competence is where does the person know, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, is the person, part of it is actually whether they're cooperating with their attorney and are they able to help themselves in their own defense and, and the attorneys mm -hmm. in her defense. And, and that's a question, uh, that only her attorneys can answer. Right. And they haven't raised it since the trial starts started. Uh, what, what sort of path would she, position. what sort of path would she have on, on appeals that could be valid for this because again, I believe the defense did the best they had with what they were working with. And if she said she didn't want to argue it, uh, they didn't argue it, but could she then on appeal say, uh, my, my attorneys or whoever was representing her at the time saying her attorneys should have brought this to the judge and should have argued competency midway through. And that's the end because it was never argued. And these kind of went along with whatever the crazy lady said. And that's very possible. I mean, that's one of the first things that's coming to my mind. What was going on? Why is it that they put up no defense? Is it because she was being difficult? Is it because she was just not cooperating? Is it because she just wasn't giving them any names? She wasn't giving them any information. And if she was doing that, then there's a problem there. Yeah. Um, and only a psychologist could, or a forensic psychologist who would evaluate her, would be able to answer that question and maybe the court would have a hearing. But I, again, maybe some of that had happened behind closed doors and we just don't know about it, about it. Right. Yeah. Maybe someone did interview her and they came back and said, no, 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 she's competent. She's competent. She knows what day it is. She knows it's her trial. She understands what the proceedings are. She understands what she's going through. She understands what the charges are. She understands what could happen if she's convicted. She understands all of that. And 
Maybe she's made a choice not to work with you. Maybe she's made a choice that she doesn't want to defend Mm -hmm. and she doesn't want to point the finger against Chad. And that's a choice she's entitled to. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. Lara Uretsky, and thank you so much for your insight onto the Daybell case. As it conti- We're not even halfway through this saga yet. You think it's done? <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. Chad's trial still coming up. So is her sentencing. And oh, by the way, her next two trials after that. For Charles Vallow. And now we're learning charges are likely going to be brought against her for the attempted shooting of Brandon Boudreau. This stuff ain't going away anytime soon. Keep it here. We will keep you up to date. Press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. You don't miss any of our coverage. My name is Tony Bruschi. Stay with us.